Jurassic World. This, this is where our story begins. The scientific breakthrough without any consideration of the consequences. So nature did what it does and unleashed chaos. This time we were deeper into the illusion of control and the chaos brought something much worse. And for a moment, we remembered how precious life is. Time has a funny way of softening our memory of what it's like to lose control. And ambition, ambition is a persistent thing. For the dinosaurs left behind, time was becoming immaterial. From miracles of science to assets destined for exploitation. Perhaps it's time we reflect on the true nature of nature. An endless cycle with one goal, survival. And this means that dinosaurs and humanity have to find a way to work out their differences. To us, a desert is a wasteland devoid of anything but the most extreme examples of life. But creatures once thrived in these lands hundreds of millions of years ago. Given the geological history that we're dealing with, dinosaurs walking among the tumbleweeds isn't that much of a stretch. The current situation, where dinosaurs are running wild, is untenable to those in charge, well, those that think they're in charge. So we're left with a problem or an opportunity. This is where you come in. They've ignored my warnings before, but maybe this time with you, it's gonna be different. I'm willing to embrace the uncertainty. Okay, I guess an introduction is in order. I'm Cabot Finch, Assistant Director of the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife. I know it sounds important, because it is, <laughs> but let's not get bogged down. and labels and titles and organizational flowcharts. I'll make this easy. You work for me. See, nothing to it. <laughs> You'll be working with the experts. This is Claire Deering and Owen Grady. And yes, we have first-hand experience with the dinosaurs. I'm the former operations manager at Jurassic World. Owen and I actually helped build the park. And unfortunately, we were there to witness its destruction. And this is Owen. He works with Velociraptors. You could call me a dinosaur wrangler, though officially I'm an animal behaviorist. I was just building a level of trust with them when this happens. Okay, so we'll need to get a few things in place ASAP. Start with a response facility, equipped with both a Ranger Team 4x4 and a Capture Team helicopter. We are making excellent progress, so let's stay focused. Next step, building a backup generator, then feeding the energy it creates to the response facility, and also make sure the building is connected to the PATH network. It only does us good if it's operational. Hey, Claire. 
We may have trouble tracking this dinosaur from the ground, and even more trouble if we're lucky enough to find it. Then, the sensible thing is to take a capture team helicopter. You can trank it from the air. See? I like the way I think. Hmm. This is Owen. I copy you. We have it. Capture successful. I knew you'd do it. Never had a doubt. Really? Well, maybe one or two. Well, it's better than usual. I'll take it. Now, where do we take this dinosaur? We have the enclosure. We just need you to deliver. Hey, don't I always? Wait, uh, you don't have to answer that. John Hammond was concerned about what would happen if dinosaurs lived in the wild. It adds a whole new level of challenge. Perhaps, opportunity. Asset has been collected. I instantly recognize this dinosaur. Kind of hard to forget once you've been trapped in a room with one. We couldn't save that Baryonyx, but we can certainly help this one. There's not a lot out there for the dinosaur to consume, so we'll need a feeder inside the perimeter of that enclosure. Hungry dinosaurs make me nervous. Can't disagree with you there. Check complete. Good to go on this. Copy. Okay. We need to get a full assessment of the dinosaur's health. Utilize a ranger team vehicle. Owen will help you get a status of the animal's overall welfare. Then we can plan our next move. Do we really need that? A plan? I mean, I've always been more of a just make it up as I go kind of guy. Tell you what. If this doesn't work, we'll try your way. Mm, that sort of sounds like a plan. While we can't replicate what we had on the islands, we still have to do what we can to get the dinosaurs more comfortable with their current surroundings here in Arizona. Sunscreen and drink by the pool? How's that sound? Are you seriously asking? Or pretend asking? Okay, Claire, how about we add some preferred terrain to their pets instead? Better? monitor these dinosaurs more closely. That means setting up a ranger post inside their enclosure. Sounds crazy, I know, but this will work. Trust me. I'm getting reports of dinosaurs running freely around the facility, Claire. 
The reports may be accurate, but they don't paint a complete picture of our current status. Angry dinosaurs on the loose. What am I missing? They're not angry. They're simply acting on instincts. The more threatened the dinosaurs feel, the more hostile they'll become. Especially if they sense survival is at stake. But it is. Both theirs and ours. Yeah, but only we know that. Well, for now, anyway. We'll start by tranquilizing one of the dinosaurs from the helicopter, and then have a transport team bring it back to the facility. Great. Do it. Acknowledging asset collection request. En route to collect the asset. Overall, I'd say our operations are improving. I'm confident we may get a handle on this yet. But I'm also concerned, specifically about our biodiversity. Still, for now, let's focus on getting the dinosaurs safe and secure, as well as building some additional viewing galleries the DFW staff can use to monitor the animals. With so many of the animals running free, our priority has to be capturing as many of them as possible. We can coordinate our efforts from an expedition center. Get one built and we'll take it from there.
I'll be able to track the dinosaurs, but some help would sure be appreciated. Claire tells me there are some candidates to recruit. Scientists. Hopefully you can find one as rough and tumble as I am. You seeing this, Claire? Yeah, I sure am. This is our first live capture opportunity. Let's not miss it. We should assign that scientist you just hired to the task. Agreed? Oh. You there? I think you're still muted. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, good idea. Uh, what have we got to lose? You know, except that maybe a new recruit. Before the remote capture teams return, we should have enclosures ready for the dinosaurs. Think of it as welcoming them back home. Okay, who's watching who? I'm not following you, Owen. Well, it's just like the dinosaurs are always watching us, so shouldn't we be watching them? Yes, we should. Once we have the dinosaurs comfortably settled into their enclosures, we'll need viewing galleries. That's what I'm saying. Only, you said it.
Owen. Owen. We have a real problem. I'm trying, Clara, but it's just... Well, this is who I am. Not you. Ah, the dinosaurs. Tell me something I don't know. Okay, how about this? There's a massive sandstorm headed our way, and it could wipe out the facility. Without power, the safety of the dinosaurs could be at serious risk. Okay, listen to me, Claire. We'll figure this out. Have I ever let you down before? Actually, no. And I'm planning on keeping it that way. Everything we can do, we will do. We've survived worse. What's a little sad? concerned about our current situation. As much as I'd obviously love to help out, I'm a little tied up. So, who's gonna protect the dinosaurs? And our personnel. Yes, of course. I mean, that goes without saying. I'm saying it anyway. It's just, it would be a tragedy to lose these animals again. And by tragedy, I mean huge financial loss. And obviously an embarrassment to those in charge of the DFW. People such as you? Uh, well, actually, exactly me. So, how do we avoid that? Okay, step one, round up the stragglers and get all the dinosaurs back into their enclosures. Then, we'll work on our safety ratings. This good? Yes, this is a plan I can support now and take credit for later. <laughs> Arizona was secure. 